I mentioned in the opening statement, and we heard in the first reading, that we're involved in a spiritual battle, a spiritual warfare. I don't mean for us to think of things like the exorcist with Linda Blair. Uh, we're talking about a more everyday battle with our selfishness, our pride, the everyday things that afflict us. And that's serious enough. I tend to read a lot of ancient history. And one of the things I've noticed when they talk about battles, most of the big battles are not won by facing the enemy head on. They're won by sneaking around the side. Sometimes in our spiritual life, we have to do that. We have a particular sin that we've confessed over and over and over again. How do we sneak around the side of that sin? Well, first of all, we have to ask ourselves, what's causing this sin? Because most of what we end up confessing are the symptoms, not the problem. You're a mother, you have four young children, all under nine years old, and you find yourself getting impatient. Guess what? <laughs> the problem is that you're exhausted and you need some time for yourself. That's why in the confessional sometimes, I'll tell a mother, your penance is to take a long walk every day for the next few days. It's a wonder the lines for my confessional are in a mile long. <laughs> Penance is like that we can take <laughs> to sort of sort out why I get jealous, why I'm envious of other people. Maybe the real problem is I'm not filled enough with gratitude. Because if I were thanking God for all the ways I've been blessed, I wouldn't have time to think about what others have and I don't. I would be celebrating what I do have. And so to to really search and be brutally honest with ourself about what the real problem is and then address that real problem. A second thing, religious art. Nowadays, you can go on Amazon and you can get artwork from any museum in the world. And a lot of that is beautiful religious art. If we surround ourselves with good things, it'll remind us to be a good person. And so to, to go on, well, go to a store, go on Amazon, whatever, but find things that will edify us, we, that will put on the walls of our house. Make sure it's not kitsch, though. I visited one of my friends on St. Patrick's Day. I'm not even Irish, but he is. And I swear, I only had one beer. But walking up the stairs, the portrait of Mary changed halfway into the portrait of our Lord. I almost fell down the stairs. So preferably, preferably nothing with eyes that open and close in the room, stuff like that. There's beautiful art out there. One of our friars, whenever he built a new friary or building, 10% of the budget was to be spent on religious art to remind the friars of who we are and to surround ourselves with good company, basically. Practice the virtues. Instead of giving up a lot of things for this Advent, what about preparing a present for our Lord of working on one virtue for the next two months? Now I can talk about getting ready for Christmas, it's Halloween, so from now on we're gonna hear all the Christmas songs, etc. Make our preparation to be a virtuous person gentleness, kindness, understanding, patience, whatever virtue you think you need most. And again, as always, if you can't think of one, ask your family members. <laughs> they will offer suggestions. <laughs> that working on virtue helps us to get beyond the everyday drudgery of falling into those sins. Do things, small things, that will change the universe. We have to develop an attitude where the small acts of charity that I perform, I realize are not simply being done in this little environment that surrounds me. But there's a butterfly effect. Remember that? One thing changes another, changes another. And before we know it, we've transformed the world in God's image. And so we have to make choices to work at our own level. 
If we try to change the whole world at once, watching the evening news, what's gonna happen? We're gonna get anxious and nervous and frustrated, depressed. Maybe put on blinders just a little bit and then decide that in, in my own home, the friary down the hill, I'm gonna to work to be a little more charitable. And especially with the friar who maybe drives me crazy. You know, there's all, believe me, our friars are just like your family. The more, the closer you are to them, the more they know how to push the buttons. And so to make choices where I, we will transform the world just by loving each other a little bit more. I could go on and on, but a lot of the things that need to be done, you already know. It's simply a question of doing it. Making choices where we decide to be who we say we are. I love the story of a, a man who encountered St. Francis on one of his journeys. And he points at St. Francis and says, you know, people think an awful lot of you. You better make sure you live up to what they say about you. Think of what people say about you and how sometimes you say, oh, if they only knew what's inside, they wouldn't be saying those nice things. Let's try to be what they say we are, what God says we can be.